I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. We have two special guests with us here in the studio today. This is Jack and Joe Napoli. Good to have you guys here. Good to be here. Analog Thanks. Alien, as evidenced by your hats and your shirts. <laughs> and, uh, you guys are flying the flag. Yeah. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. We're well, glad to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It's, great. it's always great to come to Sweetwater. Yeah, and you guys made the road trip out this time. Yeah, 12, yeah. 12 hours from New York. Yeah, Long Island. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Long trip. Yeah. Got to get over that bridge by uh, 5 a.m. or else if you don't hit past the GW by then, it's <laughs> right. you're there for hours. It extends the trip significantly, right? <laughs> significantly, right. yes. Right, exactly. But exactly. well worth it to come to Sweetwater. Well, we're glad to have you here. You were doing a morning meeting with the uh, sales engineers, showing them some of the stuff, and you're going to be doing yeah. what we call office hours where you're demonstrating and showing the products for the sales engineers. So mm -hmm. Yep. Very cool, very yeah. cool. So it, it, it interests me that really the company, if I understand it correctly, came out of a recording studio that you guys started basically in your, uh, your basement. Is that right? Yes. That's yeah. true. It started in the basement and then, you know, somewhere along the line, I think. Well, in 1995, we broke ground and built a professional studio called Cloud9 Recording. Mm -hmm. And we, when I say we built it, we really built it, Jack and I, and with our dad. And we poured the footing and laid all the concrete block, did all the carpentry, electrical, plumbing, designed the two non-parallel wall floating rooms, complete with omni and bi-directional diffusion. And then, uh, well, that was all handmade. Right. And then we also incorporated... It's called Cloud9 because we incorporated skylights into the design of the studio in the control room so you could see the clouds. And right. Jack's like, we should call it Cloud9 because we spent 20 years of, in our, of our lives, like so many others, in basement, in basement. studios. <laughs> right. So that was it. And that's really where the design and the concept of the pedals came up. Uh, basically, having dealt with so many bands of every single genre you can imagine in a studio, uh, and every guitar you could possibly imagine, you really got familiar with what works and what didn't work. And then right. Jack decided when so much stuff wasn't working, Jack said, you know what, I'm going to try to design my own pedal. And he did. And that's what led to this. The first one was the Fuzz Bubble 45, which right. is an overdrive and fuzz pedal. Right. Mm -hmm. And one. So did you have an electrical, electronic background before you got into that? Or did you teach yourself? Or? Yeah, I basically self-taught. Uh -huh. yeah. When you own a recording studio, if you learn very quickly that if you don't yeah. learn how to fix stuff, you're, <laughs> you'll go broke. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we've had great techs uh, in, in, you know, over the years that we've worked with our friend Andrew, Andrew Roberts from Purple Audio, actually, and um, Glenn Coleman from Coleman Audio. Oh, yeah. sure. He's a very good friend. Glenn, amazing at tracking stuff down. It's right. intermittent. Yeah. So we learned from him, So too. we learned from a lot of people, and it took And it you took just some pick time. things up as you go along. Right, right. Yeah. I think part of what makes all of this so cool also is that both of you are musicians. You're a drummer and a guitar player, right? Right, yeah. 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 That's how it started. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. You, you have that. You know what musicians are after when you're designing the pedals and when you're, when you're looking you at do, the and I do, and I think the studio gives us such a great advantage because we just work with like Joe was saying, different musicians, different genres, different styles. And that's where the pedals are really conceived and, and they're really tweaked out and we make sure everything is where it should be before uh, you know it hits the street, so to speak. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. So I think the first time I met you guys was probably at one of the NAMM shows. I think you just had two pedals at that time. You had the, the Fuzz Bubble 45 and the Rumble Seat, I think, we had just come out. Yeah, and then the Twister and was there, Yeah, the too. Twister was, was the Twister yeah, okay. This one, this is right, but the, right, but that was the, and actually, that's right. <laughs> it was actually a prototype. It I was think, a prototype. We'll see. Jack actually, we, we made three, and the sticker wasn't the nice dome decal that we have on it now. It was just a paper sticker, and we made three, and they were all hand etched boards and hand wired point to point. It right. was crazy. So it was, it, how, it was incredible. So we, we, and we made sure, like, well, we'll put one, one in a suitcase and one in a road case and then one in another suitcase because you just didn't know what, what happens if something got lost or broken. Right, so right. It was pretty stressful, but they all work and they still work. We still have them. They're still functional. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that yeah, we still do. Well, I saw the, the last one and got on the plane the next day to out to California and do the show. Yeah. We had to FedEx one out, too. We did. We FedEx one just because, you know, you, you know with security today, you never know if they're going to stop you for anything. So we... We, that's right, so we, we ship one out. Yeah, uh, the truck had already left to take our equipment out to NAM, so we had no choice, because it right. was that late, so we had to, like, FedEx it out the next day. Right, So that, right. that's right, so yeah. you go back, that was, like, what, that's two, we made, yeah. 2013, I guess, 2013. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 2013, years ago, yeah. Yeah, 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 something yeah. like that, yeah, yeah awesome. That, yeah. You guys have obviously come a long way since then. Uh, the pedals were great then, but you've added to the line, and I want to talk about some of the pedals that we have here, but give us a, a, a little bit of a background on, the pedals are so unique looking. Uh, you, you have a great graphic design to them and the logos and all those kind of things. Where does all that come from? I was a graphic artist in another life. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, why, uh, long before uh, we even opened up. We had a smaller studio, but I, I worked for another corporation. I was a graphic artist. And it just was a natural thing to do, you know. I mm -hmm. just liked designing them and coming up with the, uh, the look. And uh, we wanted it to have its own, you know, look and style so it would be recognizable. Right. And the 45 logo was a big part of that. 
-hmm. And that's how the uh, the fuzz bubble got named. It was a fuzz bubble 45, and we just kept the logo in our analog alien logo. Right. Sure, somewhere. We, we have a little story about Chip, the, the little character that's on, if you read on the website, he's a alien and he came and he hooked up with Jack and I and that's really where we got all the plans and designs <laughs> yeah. for the we're, we're, comic, comic book. we're comic book kids from way way back so um, yeah that's so how that I happened. added it in so that's that's where the, that's the funness of the, it all comes in well they really jump out when they're on a pedal board or when they when you when you see them they're instantly identifiable which I think is, is very cool something like this the look is always I think as much fun as the the pet you know the sound of the pedal yeah. is having it look great is a, is a part of that yeah. as well so so yeah, I think that's very cool so why don't we take a, a quick tour of the pedals you have here tell us what each one is kind of about, where it came from, and, and who might be looking for this type of a pedal. Uh, yeah, we start with the, the fuzz bubble was the first one. Mm -hmm. The overdrive side um, simulates an older Fender Bandmaster amplifier, mm -hmm. which is one of our favorite amps. And uh, the fuzz side is actually designed to work well with the, uh, with the overdrive side. And anyone that's really into, why we've had like jazz guitarists use it, hard rock, classic rock. It's not really a metal. Uh, pedal. It doesn't have that, that um, overdrive sustain, you know, high gain. It's right. not about that. And the fuzz is very unique because just with a few manipulations of the controls, you can dime it back and you can make it sound similar to the overdrive side. Hmm. So you don't have to go from this heavy overdrive to a fuzz. You can go from more of a mild overdrive to, uh, you know, a heavier, a saturated sound. <laughs> And the next one, well, the next one we actually did was the Twister up here. And that's a fuzz, but it's very unique. You, it goes from really a solid wall of fuzz all the way down to a uh, um, fairly mild overdrive and everything in between. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then the Rumble Seat came along, as you know, and that's really a nod to Rockabilly. Uh, we love Rockabilly, Brian Setzer. You know, we've seen him a bunch of times, so we decided that's to like, combine a whole bunch of effects and just really go for it. And the, we voiced the, uh, the Rumble Drive a little bit differently, rather than using like the old offenders that Brian uses and um, a lot of the guys that play that style use. We f you know, Joe really felt, he said, well, everyone that's coming into the studio already has that amp or something that's similar, so why don't we take it out a different door? So we decided to voice that more like a Marshall Plexi, which actually worked really well. We had a 69 Plexi at the studio, at the and that's yeah. what we used to model it there. And, so and it hooked um, James Burton, got into them because of that, because he was always a Fender guy, and he decided, you know, I want a different flavor. And Joe Walsh, of course, if you know the story, you know, Kenny introduced us to Joe, and he actually introduced the pedal to Joe, and Joe got three, and he went on the road with the Eagles, and that's what really started the next one in line, which is the double classic. But the, right. to finish on the, the, the rumble seat, it's got a delay also oh, yeah. that goes from 26 to 620 milliseconds. And then the reverb is just one knob based on those old classic Fender Blackface reverbs. We had a little shimmer to it, which... Little, little modulation. Modulation to us, okay. and which gives yeah. a little shimmer, which is really nice. But right. that's basically it's three in one, and it saves tremendous amount of space on a pedal board. Sure. And a lot of guys just feel like they, they just take that and just walk on stage with Elliot Easton of the cars, right? Elliot Easton, yeah, yeah, he just, uh, he just, did he a just became an people had all these artist. Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a, a bunch of people that People really went out with all those big pedal boards on stage, and he just walked out with one little one little thing, he put it down, and yeah. everybody was like, what's that? And nice, he got yeah. around, so yeah, we were very happy he about that. He calls it his Swiss Army knife. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then, actually, before the, the Double Classic came the um, base station, That's one yeah, here. Yeah. which um, Joe actually introduced uh, Pino to mm -hmm. from The Who, uh, you know, because Joe and, and Pete are really good friends. And, and I think Joe went to Chicago. They invited him down to do a, a concert there for the Teenage Cancer Trust Society. They're big advocates for that. And Pete invited Joe down. And Joe and Jetta, we know, was actually at the concert, too. And, and Joe just brought some of the pedals out. It was actually before the Double Classic came out. Right, because he was ch checking out the compressor that's on the yeah, base station, which is cool, okay. too. And then Pino walked on stage and was like, what's that? And Joe's like, dude, that's an analog alien, you know? Yeah. He's like, really? And then the next thing we know, we got an email from 
a fellow named Michael Kay, who's a wonderful guy, a tech for the Who. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know, like, and he was like, uh, you know, can you guys come to the Coliseum on Wednesday to the show? And we're like, what show? Who is this guy? Then we dialed up the email and it said, Michael Kay, technical director, <laughs> the Who. We were like, oh my God. So, we, I mean, we worship at that altar. We are the hugest Who fans ever. Right, right. Yeah. And so that's really how it so all So we got to meet got them and, 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 and you know, gave them wonderful. some pedals and Pino since 2015 has been using it ever since. Nice. And that led to Tim LaFay from Tedeschi and Trucks. Actually, actually Susan Tedeschi uses the fuzz bubble. She's been using that for a while. And then we got into the double classic. Um, Joe just really wanted his own pedal and thought we could do it. And uh, well, you interviewed him a while back and right, he basically right. told you. That was yeah. a great interview, by the way. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and he just uh, rang us up one mm -hmm. day and said, uh, he started with a compressor. This is the compressor side. Yeah. yeah. And then this is the overdrive. This is based on the, um, the Tweed amps. It's an Joe, older Tweed older Fender, tweed yeah. Fender. That Joe's a kind of, he loves those old And amps. Joe wanted us to incorporate a, the ability to make the uh, compressor go either pre or post the, the amp, so that's what this little pre-post switch does. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's several reasons for for him doing that. Uh, I think he covered it in the interview too, but it, uh, it helps with the wireless system. Yeah, with the comp compression expansion, mm -hmm. you're getting a wireless system. Mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes you want to hit a, do hit a little EQ before the compressor. the compressor. So that's why he wanted to be able to switch the back and forth. So we and do that uh, in there. The last two, the power pack is a 15 dB clean boost, which uh, doesn't add any artifacts whatsoever. It just will boost the signal right up, doesn't change your EQ. And at lower settings, it's a great unity gain provider in case your, your, your pedal's lacking in voltages here or there and you want to bring it up without altering the tone or shifting it in any way, but you just want to make it louder. So that, uh, that does that. <laughs> And the Alien Comp just came out, and it's the compressor, same exact circuit that's found in the, the Double Classic. Right. That's the lineup so far. We'll be coming out with some new stuff yeah, this year. Ho hopefully, yeah, yeah, come September, we'll, uh, we'll have some new stuff for you. We'll be back on, I think, the 18th uh, for yeah, Office Yeah, we'll be back here. Then. All right. And, oh, uh, great. Look yeah, forward to so checking cool. those out then. Cool. So it's, it's interesting to me that as opposed to uh, doing your version of a classic overdrive pedal, you've chosen more to stay with the, ampli the amplifier voicing yeah. side of things. Why is that? I just feel that, uh, we both just feel that uh, we have a nice collection of amps, and it's just what people were drawn to in the studio. Again, it's really all about our studio, and, and it gives us a very unique advantage, mm -hmm. because we just really work with musicians on a one-to-one -one basis that way. And you get into their needs and whatnot, and some of them were really, really into some of the, the older amps that we had, and it just seemed a logical way to go. Right. And it, uh, it's like Joe said about the Double Classic, it's like adding another amp to your rig, mm -hmm. which is what he wanted. And that's the way I think just about everyone's told us and feels about the, uh, that was the goal, was to like, you know, have another amp added to your rig without actually bringing it. Right. You know, we feel that the, the pedals... Um, when when you're voicing that way, they make the individual style of the player come out mm. more than the pedal having a sound. It should be the, the player that's creating the sound, and these pedals react to the player. Mm -hmm. And that's what... that's Different and that's guitars, what, too. Yeah, different guitars. Yeah, you'll hear if it's a Stratocaster, you'll right. hear if it's a Telecaster, you plug a Les Paul into it, you'll you just hear the guitar come through. Right. Right. They're not personality vacuums. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they just... And that was the intent, no. right from the fuzz bubble, and we just carried that right on through. Right, that's right. the basic, you know, concept and philosophy. of The company is that, just, just that. And then that's pretty much it. All right, oh, I like that. I think that's a that's a great approach to uh, to doing things. Uh, very different than just turning a pedal on to overwhelm everything and having it just be that pedal well, exactly. sound. Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Joe said about the what he liked about our pedals most uh, when we first spoke with him was that like how. Um, 
sensitive they were to, to, to the touch and how they felt like you, you could push and pull with your playing with them and that there was no real sweet spot that every setting was a sweet spot depending mm -hmm. on you know what you were doing at that moment which is why he's always he's always fiddling and twiddling and if you ever seen uh, him live I've never seen a person change guitars so swiftly in my entire life it's, it's like it's seamless. Yeah. He just like one off these guys. The guys who work with him are amazing. And he's just boom, and it's another guitar, and it's another guitar, and it's every different setting, it's different. And, and when you hear it, you realize why he's yeah. who he is. Well, he felt know? too. He said they're just they're not personality vacuums. They're not sucking the life out of my guitar or my playing. That's how he felt about Rumble Seat. And, you know, he wanted that incorporated in his as well. So right. that's what we did. And that's, that's awesome. It. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what awesome. We did. I love that philosophy. Thank you. Well, we're excited to see what's coming out later this year, and uh, but in the meantime, so much great stuff here to check out, and uh, we appreciate you guys making the the drive out, the road oh. trip out from uh, <laughs> from Long Island to. Thanks. To always a pleasure. It's always once we get out here, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Everybody's it's, so it's friendly. It's great. There's no place like Sweetwater. Yeah, right? oh, this place is amazing. It's yeah. really right. terrific. Thanks so much. We well, we'll look forward to having you back this fall. Thank, thank you right. so much. We'll be wonderful. Guys. Great to see you, man. Great to see Thanks, you, too. Mitch. Stay well. Thank you. And thank you for joining me for Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars, more amps, more effects, and we'll be making lots of music. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Mm -hmm.